All right, it's getting to be that time of year. And I don't know about anyone else that's watching this that has already applied to medical school or is applying right now, but like the absolute worst part of all of this was writing my personal statement. Like I would have taken the MCAT five times over to not have to write a personal statement. And like looking back, like I don't really know why it was so hard, but at the time it felt like I was like condensing my entire life and like the reasons why I wanted to go to medicine into like one page, cause you kind of are. It also felt like anytime anyone had like critiques on it, which like everyone was nice to me and but like it felt like a critique about me it felt like people were saying that like i suck because i'm sitting here putting my lived experiences on a piece of paper right like i'm like really pouring my heart out why i want to go into medicine blah 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 and then you're like it's not very good you need to really rethink this like i'm so appreciative of the people who like told me that but at the time it felt like really it was like hard to hear i also was not the type of person who had like this eureka moment like oh yes i found that I wanted to go into medicine because I saw this doctor treat you know my loved one who had this disease and blah 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 like I just didn't have a moment like that so it kind of felt like I didn't have a story or a narrative that was worth telling at all like I was just like grasping at straws to try to like come up with a reason why I wanted to go into medicine but I think that the truth is probably a lot of people felt exactly how I felt. Like they maybe didn't have this eureka moment. And I really don't think that you need one. So we should talk about what you do need. If you're new here, my name is Maggie. I'm a third year medical student. I'm currently in my pediatrics rotation, which is the very last one for me for third year. I'm specifically on pediatric endocrinology right now. So if you guys have any questions about that, let me know. Before going to med school, I was a professional MCAT tutor and I still do a lot of that MCAT stuff on this channel and on our association a business IFD with my brother John who's the other tutor on this channel but since I've done the whole like med school application thing and it's about that time of year I thought why not make some videos about it and I'm going through the process of like writing my personal statement for residency as well and so I'm like re-reflecting on these thoughts so here's your guide about how to write a personal statement that doesn't suck. So first off, the prompt for personal statements is, is something along the lines of like, why do you want to go into medicine? Or like, why do you want to be a doctor? And it will literally say that on the application. And I think that when they ask that question, they do want to know why you're passionate about medicine, but they also want to know what's special about you. And you may not feel like you have something special, but I'll touch on that in a minute. Honestly, I think probably the biggest part of the personal statement is they want to know if you can be mature and get thoughts across and reflect on your experiences and a little something that helps you is that the personal statement gives you an opportunity to sort of set up a theme for yourself. Again, I'm gonna talk about all this stuff, but I just wanted to talk about the overall structure, the question of what you're answering and really why, why is this the prompt? Because they wanna know that you are passionate about medicine, they wanna know that you're cool and not a psycho, and they wanna know that you're mature and can reflect because you're gonna have to do a lot of like reflection like throughout your career in medicine. You're gonna have to constantly be doing evaluations of not only yourself, but other people. And so they want you to be able to do that upfront. Couple things, your personal statement is not a resume recap. It's also not a sob story competition. It's your chance to show who you are, why you're interested in medicine, and establish a theme with the applications committee. Okay, so what's the structure of your uh, the ideal personal statement? Honestly, you don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Most personal statements start with some sort of hook that's more narrative than it is anything. I think mine started out with something about ballet because I was in a pre-professional dance company where I did ballet for years before I started college. And that was like something that I was actually truly passionate about and really loved. So I started out with some narrative about ballet a lot of people start out with narratives whether it be related to medicine or just related to something in your life that was impactful that you can sort of tie to medicine later on this part should be pretty personal pretty specific and engaging the audience right this is where you can get pretty creative like you don't this had this does not have to win a creative writing competition but like your hook should probably be like one of your more abstract creative parts in my opinion at some point you need to talk about your motivation for medicine right Right? That's the whole prompt. The trick here is do not say it. Do not say you want to help people, right? Do not say you're passionate about science. 
you have to give experiences that say that for you, if that makes sense. So if you love science and you you like really want that to be part of your career, maybe you wanna go into academics or you wanna be MD, PhD, talk about some story from a time in a lab or a time in a research study or a time that you got, you know, a manuscript published or like whatever it is. If you really want to help people and that's like a huge thing for you, talk about all your volunteer work. Because the thing is, if you say you wanna help people, but you have like no service or if you say you really love science and you want to be in an academic medicine but you have no research this is where I'm starting to talk about themes your application and the things that you've done in your life and the things that you have liked and the things that you're gonna be able to talk about in the interview that's your theme and your personal statement should absolutely reflect that theme so I had a theme sort of, you know, I mean, this is all just my advice. I'm not like this. No one told me to have a theme. I'm, I just think it's helpful. My theme was like rural medicine. I'm from an extremely rural part of Mississippi. I've done work with rural organizations and I'm passionate about teaching and mentoring and reaching it back out to those communities. That's one reason why this whole channel was started because I was like, you're not gonna have all this funding in these rural places. I mean, we didn't even have colleges come speak to me my like high school we had like the community college and the army come talk to us so like I took my like understanding of how I was raised and grew up talked about that in my personal statement talked about what I learned in college and what I wanted to take back to those communities and sort of like reflected it with medicine and like rural medicine and that kind of stuff you may feel like you don't have a theme but I bet if you search hard enough you can find one and I, this I'm saying this for my people who are applying in 2025 because it's a little late to be like adding a whole lot of stuff. If you're watching this and you're applying in 26, 27, whatever, start building your theme. I'll make another video on that anyway, but you can probably find something like, I didn't think that I really had like a theme for teaching and mentoring and that kind of stuff. But then I looked back and I was like, oh, I was a TA of a couple classes. I'm doing this IFD thing. Like I was applying to a pretty academic center. So like I could tie those bits in together to make this picture of like teaching and mentoring. You know, like it was a, it was a theme. I'm the, you know, I'm not just Maggie Phillips like I'm the girl oh she was the one who was the ballerina who you know she like she's from like a rural place and she likes teaching like uh, that's my theme you want to have something to where the interviewers can walk away or you know the people who are reviewing your application can walk away and be like oh yeah that's that person for my residency interviews I'm hoping that I'm like the business girl the one who has the YouTube channel whatever it is and I'm still carrying of course that uh, teaching and mentoring aspect because that is the real passion that I have so you need to talk about your motivation. You need to tie that in with like your commitment to medicine. So like what you have done in your undergrad. Bonus points if you can talk about any kind of like personal growth. I'm just trying to give y'all stuff here to like, this is not a checklist necessarily as much as it is like this is ideas when you're staring at a blank word document and you like have no clue what to type. Talking about personal growth is another good thing. So let's go back to that person who's passionate about research. Talk about a time that you really messed up an experiment or whatever it is and you had to start from scratch. Talk about when you got things denied to you like talk about a time when you had a bad grade and you had to like really work hard to get it back up something like that any of those like pieces of reflection right we're going back to that reflection kind of thing that shows that you can encounter hardships like medical school and still come out on the other side like sort of a better person because to be honest medicine demands self-awareness and self-reflection and it's obvious when people don't have it so like that's what applications committees are looking for in this wave and this generation of doctors and then of course you'll have like a closing paragraph that kind of brings it all together and, and wraps it up all pretty you need to bring it full circle you know this is when you reach back to that first narrative that you brought in in the first place and you bring in your motivations and you tie it all with a pretty bow and show how it all makes sense together this is like where you're closing up your theme right so that's sort of the general structure. I think some common mistakes that people make with personal statements is that one, they do too much trauma dumping without reflection. Again, it's not like a sob story competition. And that was my hard thing. I felt like, oh my God, like I don't have like this big sob story, which like if you do, my advice is to present that in a way that's impactful 
but reflect on it in the end. Like no, like no one wants to read it and just feel bad at the end. Like they want to feel like, wow, this person's so resilient. Look at all these hardships that this person has faced. And they want to like carry, you know, themselves into the world and, and make sure no one else experiences hardship, whatever. So if you do have a, like an impactful story that has sort of a negative theme or has like some, you know, pain or hardship associated with it, then just make sure to like reflect on it and not just like let it stew and let it simmer and let it be sad the whole time. Another one is just trying to, this is sort of goes along the lines of like rewriting your resume in a narrative. Like that's not what you're doing with a personal statement. So don't just name your achievements without talking about like how it impacted you as a person like they will be able to see both right so your personal statement is not where you name all those achievements you'll be able to list that somewhere else in the application so only put them in your personal statement if it actually aligns with the reasons why you want to go to medical school or you know study medicine i've also seen some people like sort of really focus on on other people so I got some advice, my dad's a physician, and I got some advice early on to not even say that in the personal statement. And I don't know whether that's right or wrong, to be honest. But I think that the, the moral of the story is like, this is about you. And you can say that other people's stories have impacted you and your decisions, but this is a personal statement. So don't talk about how strong your, you know, brother is. Talk about your interpretation of the things that your brother went through and how it is impacting your vision of the future or your perspective or how you're going to bring this new idea in because of the things that your brother experienced. Another thing that I probably did, I mean, I did, I did like a lot of these mistakes. Like my personal statement, it wasn't even that good in the end, but it definitely was not that good in the beginning. I think I tried to sound like too poetic and I was really just kind of like putting words together that really didn't have much meaning. This is where like, if you're using ChatGPT to do any of like your wording or whatever, like I would encourage you to not get caught up in the pretty language that ChatGPT can create and make sure that there is substance behind the pretty words. So you can absolutely use ChatGPT to make whatever your foundation is to make it sound prettier, but you have to give it the foundation, right? Otherwise, it's just stringing words together that may sound pretty, but absolutely mean nothing. So those are some of the common mistakes that I have made. I've probably actually made all of them, but that I think are not necessary in a good personal statement. And then some kind of quick tips to stand out and create that theme for yourself. I think being specific, so like one, good solid story that carries throughout your whole personal statement and really shaped who you are is much better than five vague stories of stuff that's unrelated. If you have a couple, two or three things that you feel like you can tie in together, that's kind of how I was. That's fine. I mean, I'm in med school and I did it, sample size of one, but it's kind of the same advice that you'll get with um, service opportunities, right? Or volunteering. Like everyone tells you to just do one that you really care about instead of 10 that you you know, you volunteered at the food shelter for one day. Like you're not even gonna put that on your application at the end of the day. And more importantly, when this stuff gets brought up in the interview, you have to be able to like, at least sort of talk about it and sound passionate about it. So like, it's better to just like put something that you actually do care about on your personal statement. In my um, opinion, the best way to get started on a personal statement is to actually just like, just word vomit some stuff on a word document right about actual reasons why you want to go into medicine or why you want to be a doctor specifically and this is where like this should not be pretty this should be your words like your however you want to put it on the paper because this is going nowhere right but it helps to like just actually brainstorm some of those things because then you can say like okay here's the real reasons why i want to be a doctor yes i want to help people yes i love like you know, a lot of responsibility. I thrive in, in places where I have a lot of responsibility. Yes, I love team dynamics in the workforce. Like, you know, you can find these on the internet, like re what reasons why you wanna be a doctor and then just like pick some that you actually agree with if you can't think of anything. And then like start listing out stuff that you've done. So I did ballet in high school. I was a TA for multiple classes. I did this, I started this business with my brother. I was in some other stuff too. Like, I'm just saying like, vomit why you wanna be a doctor, vomit what you've done, and then start drawing lines between them. Just don't like 
I think at the end of the day, like you should have a personal statement that has a good foundation and a good like reason to, that actually answers the question of why you want to be a doctor. And then you can make it sound pretty and you can edit it and all those things. And then definitely, obviously, you're always going to get this advice. Have someone else read it. For me, I had a couple professors read mine. I think my pre-health advisor, I had my brother read it, John, you know, the one on this channel. I also would recommend like a lot of times people will get someone from outside outside of medicine to just read it. Cause if like, if it can translate to them, then that's like a good sign that it can translate to someone who actually is in the field and will understand exactly what you're talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you with this. That's my most of my tips for writing a personal statement. And I know that like, you probably watched this video and thinking you're gonna come away with some clear idea of how to write a personal statement and you feel no better now than you did when you first clicked on this video. My thing is start, start simple. Write down the reasons you actually wanna be a doctor. Why, ask yourself this, why don't you wanna be a nurse? Why don't you wanna be a PA? You can help people in any job. You can work with science if you're a researcher. Like, why do you want to be a doctor? And it doesn't have to sound pretty because you're never gonna show this to application or admissions committees, but it has to be real. Then start writing down the things that you've done. See if you can pick up on any themes in there. It's okay if you do not have a dramatic story or a eureka moment. I did not. If you do, use it. If you're a first gen, you know, doctor, use that. If you're the child of immigrants, use that. If you're from somewhere without high resources, use that. If, you know, I mean, like all these things. Use whatever you can because at the end of the day, I trust y'all that you want to be a doctor if you're going through this whole process. And those experiences that I'm talking about have shaped your life whether you know it or not. So again, it doesn't have to be dramatic to be powerful. It doesn't have to be dramatic to get you into med school. What matters is that it's honest, that it shows growth, maturity, and reflection, and that it helps the admissions committee understand why you actually wanna go into medicine and that you can fully complete med school because of how much you love this field. Because med school is not easy and they can't have people quitting all the time. And when I finally let go of like trying to write something that sounded good and I just wrote something that was true and then later on down the line could make it sound pretty, my personal statement got a thousand times better. Your first draft, it will not be your final draft. You'll probably go through a million drafts. Just start with your story. It doesn't have to be perfect. And honestly, if you keep putting off what writing your personal statement, like you're not going to have that eureka moment between now and May. So just start with something and trust that you're enough. All right. I hope that helps. Probably a long video, but something near and dear to my heart and relevant for you guys and me right now. So drop a comment. Let us know what you want to see. Like this video, hit subscribe, all of those things. And I will see you guys in the next video. Good luck writing a personal statement.